Hello everyone, welcome to episode number 32 of the Bill Podcast and today we'll be going through Travis CI or rather Travis Continuous Integration. So what is Continuous Integration? I found this very wonderful resource by Martin Fowler and he sort of has a very long blog post about what is continuous integration. Although this was written in 2006, I believe the concepts and the fundamentals about continuous integration is written very well here. So he says this very well in the first paragraph. In a software development practice where we have a team of developers, we often need to integrate all our code and other stuff that we have done into the mainline stream of our version control. And this might create a lot of conflicts. However, in continuous integration, there are automated builds which has tests and this enables the entire team to quickly identify errors and bugs and fix them quickly. So this is a very neat method of building something quickly and finding out errors fast. So how does Travis CI come into the picture? So whenever we host a repository, an open source repository in GitHub with a simple hook to Travis CI, we can actually carry out our build processes and it will quickly tell us whether it is passing, failing or just starting. So Travis CI is a very wonderful method for any open source and in fact they have even started Travis Pro for closed or private repositories. So when you go to travis.ci.org you will definitely need to log in to your account and it will be via the GitHub OAuth and do check out this page because as you can see all open source repositories that are currently undergoing the build processes are listed here and of course here you have my repositories as well which we will kind of create later and find out more also do check out the documentation along with this screencast because it has exhaustive tutorials on how we can get started and also other parameters and configurations for a continuous integration do check out their blog as well which comes with a lot of updates for example, here they gives you some tips and tricks about CLI, command line interface or some Travis artifacts or even some security vulnerability that happened recently. Finally, do follow the Twitter account Travis CI because they give you loads of updates, tips and tricks and uh, so on and so forth. Now for this episode, we will need some kind of prerequisites. The very first one we'll be using is the Git version control. So if you have not uh, done Git before, I highly recommend recommend you to stop the screencast and go through Git. Also, you will need to know how to use GitHub, at least the basics, for example, how to create repository, push and pull. And finally, we'll be using Grunt.js as one of the build tools. So if you do not know Grunt, do go and check it out as well. So what is our project for this episode based on the Travis CI? We'll be creating three very simple Hello World projects. So we are picking Ruby, Python and JavaScript, some of the popular web programming languages to create web applications and based on this for Ruby, we'll be creating a very simple Hello World application with Sinatra, which is a very lightweight framework based on Ruby. Similarly, for Python, we'll be using Flask, which is very similar to Sinatra in the sense that it is very lightweight micro framework. And lastly, we'll be using Node.js, which is based on JavaScript, the server side of JavaScript, and also be creating Hello World. So for each of these projects, we'll be creating a Hello World project, adding in the Travis CI configurations, pushing to github and then we will see how the build processes work so we are here in the command line interface and the folder for this is completely empty as of now so let's create the first folder which is the Sinatra one so Sinatra dash Ruby and let's open up this in the sublime text the very first thing we will do is obviously create a Ruby file and I'll just call it hello.rb inside hello.rb I will put in some very basic Sinatra code so for example here I'll first say that hey I need the Sinatra and then next go to the root of uh, the server and then just print out this. Now do bear in mind, we of course need Sinatra, the Ruby gem itself. Right here, I have Sinatra installed. So after this, all we need to do is just Ruby and then hello.rb. This will kind of make us open in the local host with a port number. So let's go ahead and 
look at that and there you go yes our Sinatra app is working but our purpose for this is not to work with Sinatra but to see how Travis CI works so next let's go ahead and create a new file and in this case it is a dot file called travis.yml and here I will put in once again very basic configurations just to note that hey this is a Ruby language and RVM version 1.9.3 notice that I am also having a package file in terms of gem file so let's go ahead and create that so a new file and then gem file.ci and inside the gem file I will need to put in of course Sinatra another gem called rake rake is uh, in the Ruby world rake is used to do the various build processes and for rake we will also need to put in a new file and we'll call it rake file now our rake file will be very simple and it will just have a default task and that will just put out hello world of course also at the start of the rake file we need to have the rake declared looks like we are all set but I will just go ahead and create readme.md so here later on I'll just put in the status okay so looks like we are good to go everything is working fine for hello world next I will come to github and create a new repository and just name it as Travis and then Ruby and create repository and all I need to do is just copy in the remote and next I will come back to the command line and just copy the remote and finally push to the remote github so yes it has been updated so at this point what we need to do is go back to Travis CI and this time we will go to our accounts page and trigger a sync now button so that it can discover the newly created repository Travis Ruby is there and all I need to do is just click it as on and let's go to the settings page of the Travis Ruby repository so I am inside the settings page and inside the sub navigation service hooks over here I will go for Travis right at the bottom here click it and inside the Travis if we go to the profile tab here it will give us the token number so what you need to do is just copy and paste the token number here click active and test hook and then just update the settings after this for the very first time we need to trigger a push back to the github repository so that the build process is started so before we do a git push maybe we will just add in a little bit of changes like build status and then git add and git commit and finally we will do a git push so inside Travis CI we can access the repository by our username slash the repository name so in this case it will be Travis dash Ruby let's see what happens there and there you go it's loading and it has started that means it detected and look at it it's running and if everything is good it should send us a pass status and there you go we have the green signal to say that it has all passed a cool thing about Travis is that we can actually embed a status map message in our markdown file so to do that we will go to this little gear button and then we will go to status images we will look for the markdown file let me just copy it and I'll just paste it right after this so I will of course come back and uh, add it to my git and commit it and then I'll just do a git push once again so notice that Travis is real time you don't even need to refresh the page to observe anything there you go two has started and of course it passes as well but when we come back to the repository and refresh it notice that my markdown readme file over here will give us a little status that it is passing great so it's as simple as that of course depending on the complexity of the project I do believe that our gem file and our rake file will have a lot of things and so will be our server side programming files such as the Ruby files in this case so why don't we go ahead and now do the flask Python hello world so I am already inside the newly created directory which is obviously empty as of now so let me just open this up in sublime text and the very first thing just like the Ruby project we will create a hello.py file and inside the py file we will just create a very simple very similar uh, hello world in flask Python just like we had the gem file in the Ruby world here in Python we will need a requirements .txt, and in this case we will obviously need to mention that hey use flask and it is of version 0.9 we also need another file called setup.python and I have just kind of put in some boiler code and lastly of course we need the .travis.yml file and inside here it is very similar to the Ruby one 
one, I have just mentioned that it is Python, use the version 2.7. Now you can also use other version, and this is one of the great things about Travis. You can, it can test your code against other versions of the programming language. And then it installs using the requirement.txt file. And lastly, it will run this script, setup.py. Finally, of course, as with all GitHub repositories, we will have a readme.md markdown file. And here, of course, I will say it is status, and then we will add in the image later on. So in this case, I will create another Ryu repository, and I'll skip the steps of pushing to it. So just to let you know that it will be called Travis Python this time. And after I have pushed the code to the GitHub, let me just refresh it, and there you have it. So I'll do something very similar. I'll go back to the Travis and my accounts profile and then sync it so that I can discover the new repository. There you go. And I'll turn it on and go for this on the GitHub repository. And it looks like they have already put this on. Maybe they can remember my token and the username. So I'll just do a test hook and update settings. After this, I can come back to the repository on the Travis CI platform. Now, obviously nothing will be happening now because we need to trigger a push. Let's now notice what happens to the Travis CI platform. Now notice the URL once again, it has to be slash username in GitHub and slash repository name. And there you have it, it has passed the test. And of course, as usual, you can go back to the status images, copy the markdown file. And next time when you push, your status image in the readme file will be available. And finally, we will create the Node.js JavaScript Hello World and work with it in Travis. And for this, once again, I will pick up a snippet of Hello World just like this. If we come back to my command line, I'm already inside the empty folder. And let me just open this in Sublime Text and inside a new file called hello.js this time. Let me just copy and paste this. All right, so Hello World in Node. Next, just like what we did with rake file in Ruby and set up for Python, we also need to initiate kind of some kind of build process. So for this, I'll be using a grunt. So for that, we'll do grunt in it and then grunt file. So all the questions, I'll just mark it as no. And there you have it. We will have a very simple grunt.js file. So let's go ahead and edit that. Now, obviously we will not require so many tests, just a little hello world. So let me just go ahead and replace the entire thing. So what I've done is just one little test here, which will be linting. And by default, I just set it to linting. And when you call Travis task, it will also do a little linting. Apart from this, just like how we had the gem file for Ruby, as well as requirements.txt for Flask, we need to create a little package.json for node. And inside package.json, it will be a very simple JSON file once again. All we will be saying that, hey, this has a dependency on grunt. And of course, name, description, and author, so and so forth has to be there, as well as a little script to run the test and it will run grunt Travis, which will basically do the linting. And finally, just like the previous two projects, we need the Travis.yml file itself. And in the YML file, it will be something very similar. We will denote the language as well as the version. And of course, finally, I'll just do a readme.md file, which will have an empty Travis status, which we'll add in later on. All right, so looks like everything is good. So once again, git in it and then git add all the files and git commit it as initial commit. And at the same time, I will come back to GitHub and create a new repository and call it Travis-Node. And there you go. When we refresh the page, we should see our newly created Travis node file. All right, so similarly, we will come back to Travis and then go to accounts and make sure that we sync it by clicking the sync now button. And this time, guess what? We should have Travis dash node, which I will turn it on and quickly go on to the settings page service hooks, All right? So let me just click 
Travis and it looks everything is fine so I'll just test hook and update settings right so for the very first time once again Travis will not start looking for our repository so let me just go to my username and then slash Travis dash node as we can see here it will continue loading unless we do a manual push to github repositories so let's come back to Travis and have a look and there you go it is uh, starting the build one and looks like it passed the subtask 1.1 you can go into the details and have a look at it it's just fetching the npm and it has a neat history as well it tells you the duration and when it was finished and what version of node it is using and there you go it has passed now just for some testing yep let's add in the markdown status image i'll come back to my text editor this time i've removed the 0.6 just so that it's faster let me just add in the image and no Notice what we are doing in grunt is just a bit of linting. So when we run grunt in our command line, by default it will do linting and obviously it has no errors. Now let us force a little error. So I'm going to come back to hello.js and take out this little semicolon. And now let's run grunt. Yep, there is an error because there's a missing semicolon. But you know what? I'm just a careless developer. I'm just going to commit it anyhow. So git add and then git commit revised hello.js and let me just uh, git push it and let's see what happens to Travis now so I'm gonna come back here and then just observe the page for build number two which should not pass so build two has started right and yes it has detected an error and now when I come down we see this failing message which is pretty cool so yes that's it about Travis CI of course the complexity of how you want to use Travis CI depends on your test as well as other build processes that are integrated but guess what once you have the initial setup ready it will be really nice to let it go through Travis CI and it will continually tell you immediately what are the errors to fix it's great for teamwork as well as shipping code very fast so the next thing I want to talk about are some peripheral links related to Travis CI. One of them is this thing called the browser extension. So I've already downloaded uh, the Chrome extension for Travis CI. So let me just go ahead and enable it. So here I am in my settings page of Chrome and if I enable it and now if I hop around some GitHub repositories, for example, I am aware that Yeoman uh, uses this Travis CI. So if I go to Yeoman and visit the GitHub page, I will have have this little icon right beside the name. Yeoman I believe also embeds it in the markdown file but some repositories for example I believe Rails also uses Travis CI but it does not of course puts it down in the markdown file but hey this is a handy little notation right at the top of github pages for us to know number one whether this project is using Travis CI and number two what is the build status. So this is a really handy browser extension and and I definitely recommend you to use this. The next one that I find really handy is this build notification. So every time there is a build, you'll actually get emails. So what you can do is either turn it off or set some other configurations. Maybe you want some other email to get that notification. Very handy. Now, one of the web programming language, PHP, is something I didn't cover, but this person has already done that. PHP Composer, PHP Unit, Travis CI example. Do go ahead and uh, watch this if you are into the PHP web language and finally there is this slide share that talks about Travis CI as well do give it a run through because it talks about many of the basics as well as some of the processes and finally for Travis CI there's also a command line option which I find very helpful if you don't want to keep going back and forth to the web interface do install the command line option and yes that's it for this week's episode on Travis continue integration I hope this is a very handy tool for all of us that works in team and also for sort of rapid iteration of our software so for the bill link of the episode it goes to frifrap which is a front-end banter in 30 minutes or less it's done by Divya Manian and Garen Means nice little uh, screencast that we can go through while having your breakfast so do have a check out while you are even traveling they apparently have the 
audio version as well and Vimeo and uh, even the feeds and so on and so forth. So very nice little podcast for us to watch and subscribe to. So of course, follow Divya in the Twitter as well as uh, Garen Means. She's a front-end developer, JavaScript developer, an awesome one. And uh, that's it for all other episodes. Do check out build-podcast.com and you can subscribe it through the various means on the left-hand side. And I will see you next week. Goodbye.